flu season is now synonymous with COVID season. And for vaccine sales, that's good for Moderna, whose shares are up big in a recovery quarter with some pretty impressive numbers. Joining us, the Chief Financial Officer, Jamie Mock, here with us on the Schwab Network this afternoon. Jamie, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Oliver. It's good to see you again. Appreciate that. Uh, okay, let's talk about the numbers. The takeaway I'm reading from analysts and reporters is that the vaccine sales surprised from a competitive angle that you took some uh, share from your big competitor, Pfizer. Is that correct? That is true for the overall year. And I'd say the year of 2023 was a bit of a transition for us uh, and for the overall COVID market. Number one, it was the first time that it was actually completely commercial in the United States. And you mentioned our share uh, from a comp com competitive basis. And so we had 48% share in the first year being commercial versus 37% share the year before. So we were pleased with that. But overall, the market was smaller. It didn't really meet our expectations. So while we met the framework that we had laid out for the year, uh, we're more excited about as we head into 2024, what's ahead of us. The total COVID sales were down about, for vaccines, were down about 45% from the year prior, but that's all kind of within the expectations. You, 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 obviously, we know this is lessening, but as we talked about before, some stabilization being reached and a general kind of permanence of these sales is also what you expect. Yeah, that's right. I mean, if you look at the overall year, it went from we had $18 billion in revenue in 2022 to $6 billion in revenue in 2023. So obviously a big change year over year. Um, and if you look at the actual U.S. market, what used to be well over 100 million doses per year in 2022 was about 60 million doses. And this past year was probably in the 40 to 45 million range. So we think it's somewhat stabilized and that 2023 will end up being the low point. And then we hope the vaccination rates start to rise as, as in the coming years. I guess we should expect seasonality. How much of it uh, do you expect in your numbers, Jamie? What does COVID seasonality look like right now? Yeah, we are very much a seasonal business. So, in fact, we guided this morning that only 100 million of our approximately $4 billion in revenue will be in the first half of 2024. So 98% of the revenue will be in the second half. And that is to be expected. You know, most of the countries are in the northern hemisphere that pay for the uh, vaccines. And, and that's what we are uh, primarily supplying here in the second half. We're also excited about bringing RSV to market, which will be our second product. And if we're lucky enough to get approved in the first half of this year, we should be uh, bringing that to market in the second half of this year, which is also part of the seasonal sales, uh, much like COVID. You expect that to hit internationally first, is that correct? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I've seen uh, expectations 2024 for the RSV uh, vaccine in Australia, Germany, uh, continuing to expand to 25? Also, also in the U.S. Okay. So we're hoping for approval in a, all the markets you just mentioned uh, sometime in the first half of 2024, and some will trickle on into the second half of 2024. And then by 2025, getting into even more markets, but we've tried to prioritize as best as possible. As you've developed uh, this vaccine, and I think one of the big things about today, just from a market perspective, is it seems investors have finally gotten a grasp of the rate of change for COVID vaccines, given that the stock has generally been punished over the last couple of years. The big bounce today to me kind of signals putting that kind of to the side for a moment, thinking about going forward. The RSV vaccine, the next big thing in your guys' pipeline, the capex in your numbers was still down that what's uh, to me is also kind of interesting and potentially a thing for investors to look at if you're taking your mrna tech and applying it is it not that expensive from like a capex standpoint i mean you're developing new drugs here but your expenses are actually down yeah it's a great point um so if you look at 2023 i mentioned was a year of transition and that was about the covid market and how we had to resize our entire footprint and we'll get back to the CapEx and the facilities that we have across the globe and or our building across the globe. But then you look at 2024, this will be a year of transition from a one product company to a two product company. But really, when you look at our late stage pipeline, and by that, I'm saying about nine products, we think we're going to report a lot of news over the next year. Uh, that should be catalyst for the overall stock and transition from not just a COVID company, but a respiratory company, a latent vaccine company, an oncology company, and a rare disease company. So we're quite excited by that. But to your point in terms of how can we manufacture and you know optimize our scale, mm -hmm. that is one of the best things and one of the biggest value props of mRNA being a platform. 
is that primarily we can use the same manufacturing capacity in any of our sites for almost all of our technology. Our cancer product, which is individualized, is a little bit different just from a size perspective, but ultimately it's the same technology. It's just not the same manufacturing footprint. Mm. But yeah, so as we expand into RSV, as we expand into flu, our combination vaccines, it'll use the same manufacturing technology and therefore the marginal cost of our products should go down over time quite a bit. Okay. Uh, the last point here for the RSV vaccine, do you have any idea kind of what that looks like commercially yet in terms of sales, in terms of impact? Is that something that uh, you're communicating to investors at this point? Yeah. So, I, I mean, maybe I'll talk about the overall market sure. and then I'll bring it back to Moderna. So the market kicked off last year with two competitors and it was nearly a two and a half billion dollar market in the year 2023, which we are very encouraged by. It says that there's a lot of appetite out there uh, in the patient population for an RSV vaccine. And if you look at what we project the market size to be, when you really take all in all patient populations, not just the ones that are approved today, we think that could be about a ten billion dollar marketplace. Um, so if you bring that to Moderna, we're very encouraged by our value proposition. It is in our guidance for which we gave of approximately $4 billion in sales in 2024. So we hope to put our initial, uh, get initial sales inside the year 2024 and then grow from there. Okay. Thanks for the update, Jamie. Uh, seems like a fairly seminal quarter here and uh, looking forward to continuing the conversation. Thanks for joining. Thank you, Oliver. Appreciate you having me. You got it. Jamie Mock, CFO at Moderna, shares with a $12 rally, 13.5%, one of the biggest uh, earnings rallies in recent memory for the company coming up.